Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series of videos, we're helping you guys prepare for the EC6 subject core exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. In this series right now, we're focusing on science. More specifically, in this episode, we're going to be looking at light. Coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in this series and like to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this YouTube card here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes in the order they were taught and by topic, so you can drill down on what is most important to you. Now, if your viewer or browser you're watching this video on doesn't support YouTube cards, you can check the description below. I will have it linked there as well. Also, check the description for additional resources such as the Big Yellow Book. I mention this in almost all of my videos. Not because I have any connection at all with the author or publisher, but because when I was researching for this series of videos, I found that it is a resource that comes up time and time again with people who have been successful in the EC6 exam. Uh, I've ordered one for myself. I use it oftentimes to guide me in the direction of these videos, so check the details out below. Now, since my last video that posted last weekend, um, there was a lot of comments that were uh, put out there, so I want to give a few shout-outs to CY Wilson 50 Thank you so much for your comment this week. I really appreciate you. To Ben Harrell, as always, man, I work with you on a daily basis. You're a rock star. You're going to be an amazing teacher. Not only do you encourage me in the comments, but you also encourage me at work. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you very much. Also to Angel N. West Miller, thank you for your comment. Uh, Alexandria Marquez and also Linda De Hoyas, thank you very much for watching and subscribing and also for liking my videos. And also if you are watching as this, and you've been watching a few of the series and you're finding them helpful, please show your support by giving me a thumbs up in the like area. That would be great. Also, uh, subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. That will alert you to upcoming videos as I post them. Also, if you're currently in uh, college or university, please uh, share these with your friends that are in education and also to your professors so they can continue to get the word out that these videos are out there if they are helping you. I would really appreciate that. Now, I've only got about three or four more videos in the science uh, series that we're going to do, and then we're going to be moving on to math. So if you are looking uh, to find some resources for math, that is coming up after I finish this particular area. Okay, so we'll get that to that next. Now we're talking about light. I'm going to put five minutes up here on the corner. Once that ticks down to zero, we'll do a quick wrap up and then we'll pick up in the next episode where we left off with this one. So let's go ahead and start with five minutes on the clock. Now um, I'm going to put up a graphic here on the screen and it shows where the visible light spectrum is. It's kind of towards the, uh, to, towards the middle a little bit. You'll see that kind of located here. But I want to go ahead and start talking about the electromagnetic spectrum that we cannot see. Our eyes cannot see them. And so uh, we're going to first talk about radio waves. Now radio waves have a longer wavelength, which means that the distance between the different wave areas, I'm not going to get into real specifics because you won't need to know them, but it's basically the distance between buildings. They have the longest wavelength. And we use this to broadcast FM and radio uh, signals like an AM band. Also cell phones might utilize this as well. Then we get into microwaves. Microwaves can be the distance between people or the distance between a butterfly's wings. Uh, they are a shorter wavelength. And uh, we're going to use these for broadcasting video and audio. Uh, a lot of times we're going to bounce this off of satellites to be able to broadcast around the world. Uh, military uses this. We also use microwaves in our home to heat food. It's not the microwave device itself, but the frequency that's used to excite the water molecules within our food that warms it up. Then we get into infrared waves. Uh, these are this, uh, this, the wavelength here is about the size of the, the point on a needle. And uh, infrared waves are a little bit harder to describe. If you've ever seen the old movie P uh, Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, they were hunting down this alien that came to Earth and he could track his prey by seeing infrared light, basically the heat waves that come off of people. We see this in the military being used at night to be able to find people running around and to be able to find the enemies. Um, infrared is also used by viper snakes like rattlesnakes to hunt their prey. They can actually follow the heat signature that their prey is uh, touching grass or the, the ground that they walk on and they can track their prey that way. Then, of course, we get into visible light, which we can see the wavelength is about the size of microorganisms, uh, so very small wavelengths. We're going to talk about that more here in a minute because that's more likely where your test is going to focus. Then we get into ultraviolet light. We can't see this. This is the size of molecules, uh, so compounds that make up uh, matter. And uh, ultraviolet light is coming from the sun. It is going to uh, cause sunburns. It's going to uh, degrade paint on your car. It's going to degrade plastics. Then we get into x-rays, a much shorter frequency. Of course, we use this in medicine to diagnose broken bones and damaged organs or to diagnose uh, diseases. And then finally, we get into gamma rays. They're the size frequency of the nucleus of an atom, very small, short wavelength. And uh, we use this in nuclear medicine to help treat cancers and things of that nature. 
So let's get more into visible light. So visible light uh, spectrum follows uh, a path of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So seven areas of it. So a good way to remember this sequence is Roy G. Biv. And uh, basically, uh, red would be the longest wavelength getting to violet, which is the shortest wavelength. And that's easy to remember if you remember ultraviolet follows violet, and it gets even smaller and more damaging to things like the skin. Now, uh, actual electromagnetic waves, including visible light, can travel through empty space. Now, the sun, of course, is our uh, biggest resource for light on our planet. It is uh, necessary for all life on our planet, and it also gives us the ability to see. Now, when we get Roy G. Biv all together, it comes in the form of white light, and uh, Sir Isaac Newton actually discovered this, and we can break it out through a prism to see all of its magnificent color, and we often see this in nature in the form of rainbows as light passes through uh, water droplets in the air after a rainstorm or through fog. Now, light can uh, travel completely through uh, transparency, whether it's glass, all light colors can travel through it uh, undistorted. Then we get into wax paper. It is translucent, only allows some light to go through. And then, there, of course, there's opaque things such as wood or aluminum foil that no light can pass through. Now, light can pass through and, and bounce off of things like reflection. We see this in mirrors when we're seeing ourselves. It, uh, it angles itself perfectly uh, in a 90 degree angle, or whatever angle is striking the glass, to be able to reflect back to our eyes. And in reality, in reflection, we only see the color of objects that reflect back to our eyes that's not absorbed. So for example, a, a leaf on a tree is green. It does not have green within its pigment, so it reflects that back off of the uh, leaf itself, and our eyes perceive the leaf as green. My shirt, of course, is kind of brown, so it's reflecting back any light that is not absorbed. Our eyes perceive it as brown. It absorbs everything else. So like the color black, it absorbs all light. That's why we see black. Things that are white reflect all color, so we see it as white. Okay, then we get into refraction. That's the bending of light, and we see this oftentimes. If we stick a pencil into water, and we see the top half sticking out of the water, it's going to bounce back light faster to our eyes than the, the part of the pencil that's in the water itself, because as it travels through different mediums, it's going to slow down. So the light that hits the pencil through the water has to travel back through the water and back to our eyes. It slows it down, and we see a bent pencil or a, a disconnect, okay? We have just a little bit to go, so let's keep going. Let's talk about um, convex lenses. Convex lenses actually pop out, and they're going to actually be used in microscopes and telescopes. They make things that look small appear much larger for us. We see this in binoculars. And then we also have concave lenses. They kind of concave in, so they swoop in. That's a good way to remember it caves in. Now, these type of lenses are going to bend light to be able to see a broader range, such as a wide-angle lens on a camera. Um, you might be in a hotel room and want to see who's out in the hallway knocking on your door so you look through the peephole. And so it sees a really wide area and a small focal point. So that would be a concave lens. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up, guys. We already hit the five-minute mark. So a quick wrap-up would be remember Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Remember things like uh, transparent, translucent, and opaque. Also remember uh, convex and concave lenses. Convex, of course, makes small things look big. Concave makes uh, big things look small in a smaller area, such as a wide angle lens or a peephole on your motel room. Okay guys, thanks again for watching. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell. Share with your friends, comment below. If you've passed your exam, please come back to one of my videos. Let me know so I can do a shout out in my next video. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.